Property investing for beginners. Hi, George Markowski, Positive Property. What I wanna do is show you a training that I did for property investing for beginners. First thing you wanna do as a beginner is really get clear on your goals and get clear on where you're going. Because you can't get where you're going if you don't know where you, what you're doing. You've got to ship a, a boat, and it doesn't matter how much energy you've got, how big the engine is, if you've got no rudder, you just be paddling around in circles. So if you want to invest, if you want to really invest, first step, you've got to invest in yourself, really clear on your goals where you're going. So I'll share this with you right now. One thing I want to start with is the question, are you living the life you want to live? And if the answer is an immediate F yes, then something's wrong. And you know, I've done some form of this exercise that I'm gonna show you over the last 20 years. When I first started, you know, when I first started um, doing this, I was actually struggling to make ends meet. I was working long hours, I was frustrated and didn't have my goals. And um, now I'm living the life of my dreams. So just that, you know, it is possible to do this. And the two things that helped me get there more than anything else is one, setting the goals and doing it this way, because this is a very different way of what you normally learn how to do it. And two, using property investment to get me there. So that's why this is fundamental and very important because goals are so important. One of the reasons goals are important is that if you, it's like um, the goals are like a rudder on a ship. So if you've got a ship and you don't have a rudder on it, it doesn't matter how much you push, you know, it doesn't matter how big the engine is, the boat's just, the ship's just gonna go anywhere. The boat's gonna go anywhere. But really, if you wanna get somewhere, you need to have a rudder, you need to have the goal. So it's very, very important. And you know, with life, we've got the choice of creating a destiny and going towards something. And if you don't have strong goals, if you don't have a passion, if you don't do this, what will happen is you'll end up working for other people's goals. That's the, that's the fact of it. But if you've got a big vision and big goals, you're gonna attract people to you and people are gonna help you build goals. So it's vitally important to have the goals, but also it's a bit like the space shuttle. The space shuttle, you've got the big tank at the bottom, the two booster rockets, and there's a tiny little bit at the top. And that's, um, you know, the rest of the rest of the, where the people are, the tiny bit at the capture at the top. And basically 80% of everything in the space shuttle or rocket is actually the fuel. And 20% is just the rest of the payload. And goals are the same thing, or, you know, the why part of your goals is 80% of it. If you are very clear about what you want, why you want to get it, and you've got a big desire to do it, I really believe that's 80% is going to give you the motivation to go through where you need to do it. Because getting your goals is not easy. You know, getting out of your comfort zone and doing different things is hard. You know, fortune favors the bold and people with big goals, it gives you the energy and the motivation to get through and get there. So before I start, what I want to talk about is hierarchy of competency. We start at the bottom, the red part, unconscious incompetence. And that's when you don't know you're not good at something, right? And look, we're going through goal session now. And some of you who haven't done goal session many times before or haven't had a lot of practice, you might not know you're not good at it. Then now you've seen this course and you're in here listening to me and you're probably, con you may be conscious and competent and saying, well, I know that I need to do goals, but I don't know how to do it. Or you may have a bit of experience and you're consciously competent. And then once you do something that you're consciously competent, then you become unconsciously competent. I'll give you an idea. So driving a car. When you're four years old, you probably didn't realize you didn't know how to drive a car, didn't realize you were going to learn one day. But then you're 14, 15, you're consciously incompetent. You realize you want to drive one day, but you don't know how to do it. So then you learn how to drive and you sit down and you've got your little checklist and you check your rear view mirror, you put your seatbelt on, you put it in neutral, put the thing down and you've got all these things and you're driving and you're focusing as hard as you can. And that's where you're consciously competent. You can drive, but you've got to focus. And I'll bet you now when you drive, you're probably on the phone or driving home, not even thinking. And you know, I don't know if this happens to you, it happens to me sometimes. I end up in my driveway and I think, how did I get here? Because my unconscious just took me there. So. And I've become con unconsciously competent in goals, which is great, but that's why I spent the last two days really refining what I'm doing so I can help you. And the re one of the reasons I'm showing you this is also is because if you're gonna get a mentor in anything, you need to get someone that's consciously competent, that green part. And I know you probably think unconsciously competent. Some people have gotten success in certain areas, but they don't know how they got there. Now, those people, they can't teach you because they don't know how they got there. And really, you want to learn from someone that knows the steps on how to get somewhere. 
and knows how to teach people the steps on getting there. That's very important. So let's get into it. So ha happiness, happiness in life. I want to talk about this because I really believe it comes down to three things. And the most important part of has happiness is freedom. And that's freedom of time. And the reason I think this is a foundation because without freedom, there's not going to be a lot of happiness going on. And, you know, I know people that, you know, they've got lots of money and they work hard, but they, haven't, they, they don't um, have a lot of free time, so they're not happy. Now, freedom is also a basis because I really believe that once you create freedom, it helps you get the other things. And the other three things in this triangle are fulfilling relationships. Because how many millionaires out there have you, have you seen an interview saying, I'd give it all away just for some meaningful relationship? You know, money is money, but you know, they say money can't buy happiness. And it's sort of true if you use it for the wrong things. But if you use money for the right things, it can buy happiness. Because if you use money to, and the third thing is health. You know, I mean, if you go to a cancer ward right now, go today or tomorrow and go there and look, go to a cancer ward and say, hey, if I can give you $10 billion, would you be happy? They probably wouldn't, they'd probably answer no. And probably you might end up with a bedpan thrown in your head as well. Because health is more important than money. And it's obvious when you go to cancer wards or with people on their deathbed and things like that. So these are the three things, the triangle, the, the building that creates happiness. That's what I really believe. And I believe that everything you look for to make your happiness is a combination of these three. And really the foundation is freedom. And freedom, you can create freedom through money, but you can't create it through working harder long term, even though short term it can help. Because the way you get freedom is by creating a passive income. Because once you've got a passive income and you've got money coming in without working for it, then suddenly you've got time. When you've got more time and money, that can help you get fulfilling relationships Help, help you with your health and help you with everything else and happiness. And I really believe the foundation to all this is certainly creating passive income and creating money. So that's what's going to help you get everything else to create happiness. So I really believe money can bring happiness, but you've got to spend the right things. See, people that spend money on you know, gambling, drugs, alcohol, partying, all that sort of stuff, it can bring a bit of, you know, temporary happiness. But it's not going to help you if your health or filling relationships or your freedom. So therefore it won't give you the long-term happiness because the long-term happiness comes from filling relationships from having, you know, health and freedom. And what happens is each one of these helps the other. So if you've got a really fulfilling relationship, that's going to help you get more freedom, more money, more health. If you've got really good health. It's going to help you get more freedom, more filling relationships and vice versa. So all three work together. So they're the three sort of basic things that I believe are very, very important. So now let's talk about, you know, how most people try to make money and try to get goals and reach financial freedom. You know, they start out by making hundred dollars. Then they think, okay, let's try to make a thousand shit. That was hard, but now let's try to make 10,000. Then eventually you get there, but that's now it's three years later. And the mere thought of work until you've got a hundred thousand in the bank makes you want to give up all your possessions, go live in a hippie commune in Minibin. This is the old school way of doing it where you're just working harder and harder and harder to get more money. I've tried that. Trust me. I've tried that. It doesn't work. So, um, so, if you've read any financial books on how people become successful, this is the way they do it, right? What happens is they start out making 100. Then that 100, they invest that 100 in skills, training, or assets that will eventually get you 1,000. Then you invest that 1,000 in skills, training, assets that will get you 10,000. And then you invest that 10,000, and then that's how you get there. Now, this is the way to do it. So what we've got to do is we've got to, we've got to forget trying to do it all ourselves, and we've got to think about your money, your time as an investment and you can invest it in different things. And I really, what I do is I invest my money to improve my skills. I invest it with mentors to teach me to be better at certain areas. And I invest it in assets to give me returning income. And when you invest your money in time, you get a massive return and very, very important. So it's all about investing and you've got to get the investor mindset, right? So, you know, you want to, I think spending money for the sake of it is sometimes a waste of money, but it's okay to do it every now and again. But I really want to get most of my time and money and invest it so I can get dividends in the future. Like, for example, I invest three hours a week working out. I've been doing this for a long, long time, for 20 years now. 
and the dividends I get paid are huge. And I'm going to go through that when I talk about habits and things like that. So let's find out the passion time ratio before we get to these goals. See, the passion time, right, and what I want to do is I want you to get a list as part of your homework and get a list of everything you spend your time doing and how much time you do it in fulfillment rating. I've got an example here. So for example, TV. Okay, so you write TV, how much time do you spend a week on it? 15 hours, and give it a value of fulfillment. How fulfilling is it? Let's say it's a five. Then gym, two hours, fulfillment, seven. Socialize with friends, three hours, fulfillment, eight. Facebook, 12 hours a day, some people, but let's say a week, and fulfillment, three. So once you've got this thing down, then what you can do is sort it out, because what you want to do is look at the things that give you the most value and see how much time you're spending time with. Because look at this one here, for example. I've got um, socializing with friends. I spend three hours, but I value it at eight. So really what I should be doing is probably spending more time socializing with friends. And I should probably take a bit of time out from Facebook and TV. I don't really watch TV or Facebook that much anyway, but I do spend a lot of time, you know, studying and working and doing stuff. And I'll probably want to spend more time socializing with friends. So that's an eight for me. So I really want to add more time there. So this is a really good thing. And so if you want to do this part of your homework, which is great, then what I want to talk about is goals versus habits. So, you know, goals is that goal there and habits are the things that you do. And they're not the same, they're different. And what I want to do is once we've got our goals, I really want to focus on getting the habit of getting the goal because goals are quite large and sometimes they can feel insurmountable. And really what we want to do is we want to create, the way I see it is goals, you sit there and work for them really hard. But what I like to do is just like I like to invest my money and get it returning. So if I, you know, I can, I can invest in a property, for example, I can buy a property and it's going to invest $30 a week for the first year. And that's $400,000 property is going to make me 400,000 in 10 years time, right? I'm getting a massive return, but if I'm getting my goals and I'm doing all the work myself, then I'm not getting the return. But if I can actually create habits, I put the work in at the beginning. So creating a habit is like getting investment property. It's great because you put the work in at the beginning and then the habit does the work for you. So what you want to do when you talk about habits is you want to focus on the cue, not the habit, right? That's the important part. Let's do the easy ones first. Then we want to get compounding habits and we don't want to do it for 21 days. So compounding habits, the difference is you get a compounding habit and look at the return you get, that blue graph, exponential which is great. That's a bit like property investing. That's the return you get. But when you put money in the bank or try to save yourself the wealth or you try to do all the work yourself to get your goals, that's the red line. The red line's hard. It's hard work. What I want to do is I want to get the exponential. I want to get the low-hanging fruit, the exponential stuff. That's what I really want to do. So how do the rich get rich? See, the rich, they're investing their time and money in education, biographies, gym membership, seminars, personal coach, where the poor are spending it on food, holidays, football tickets, brand new TV, six pair of beer. So you can look at these things and I want, I'm going to put this in the homework and have a look and circle which ones on the left you've got, which ones on the right and how many of the ones on the left you can move to the right because you want to think more like a rich person. And also, you know, the poor middle class, they believe life happens to them. Let's go through this list as part of your homework and tick the ones that are you and then let's find out which ones we can change of your habits and then tick which ones you've already got out of this and which ones you want, right? So compounding habits, like I said before about me going to the gym. See, me going to the gym three times a week, and this has been doing this for 20 years. One, the reason it's a compounding habit is one, if I go to the gym today, well, then yesterday, last night, I'm, gonna not, I'm not going to drink because I know I'm going to the gym. So it compounds that habit. Also, I'm less likely to smoke. Then today after a workout, I'm going to have a better meal than if I haven't been working out. So it, it builds. You know, you've got some people on the internet, you know, saying this moronic stuff like, you know, a good habit is make your bed every day. If that, I mean, seriously, make my bed's not compounding. I mean, one, if it's made or not, I don't think it's going to make it. It's not going to compound the rest of my life. So what I want to do is I want to get the habits that are actually going to give me a massive return. The ones that aren't going to give me a vast return, forget it. I'm not interested. I'm interested in the ones that are going to give me a really big return. So, for example, I read every night for half an hour. Now, that habit has been really good because it's given me a massive return because 
I've got so much knowledge out of that and it's really become good. I've always doing course and learning things. And whenever I'm learning something or doing a course, that gives me a massive return. And look, I like to watch a bit of TV as well and play some computer games. And that gives me a return of relaxation every now and again. But the problem is, the more you do it, the less return you get. So it's a matter of finding out what's going to give you the biggest bang for your buck out of your habits. And I'm not judging here. Whatever you want to do, you can do. But really, what we're going to do is we're going to talk about now about goals and how that's going to affect us. So I really believe the life you want, the family you want, the marriage you want is one property portfolio away. Seriously. And what I want to talk about is smart goals. Smart goals, you know, your goals have to be specific, measured, attainable, reasonable, and timed. Right? So attainable. What do we talk? Let's talk about attainable. Let's talk about specific. So specific goals. So let's say, for example, I want to get five properties in five years. That's pretty specific. I know exactly how I can measure that. In the end of five years, it's measured. I've got five properties. I've got my goal. If I haven't, I haven't. Is it attainable? Yes, it is. For me, it is. Is it attainable for you? Well, if you're doing our pro property course, if you're doing our mentorship, our black belt, yes, it is. Because mo a lot of our members, the program is getting 10 properties in 10 years. So it's very possible. Is it reasonable? Is it timed? Well, you can say at a certain time. So that's what we're talking about, smart goals. And it's important. The attainable and reasonable part, what I want to say is, to this is I'd like you to shoot for the sky, not for the roof, right? So, because I really believe that if your goals aren't getting up early, aren't keeping up late at night, they're not big enough or they're not authentic enough. You need to look at your goals and get very excited. One of my goals, one of my big goals was to live on the beach. And as you can see behind me, I, I live on the beach now. And now at the time when I wrote this down, I didn't think it was possible. But, you know, I wanted to write a big goal and something that got me excited because buying a house in the suburbs wasn't getting me excited. So I needed to actually get a goal that was going to get me excited. So what I did is I said, you know, what? so when we're doing our goals, you really want to focus in on something that's going to get you pumped and excited. It doesn't have to be fully attainable, reasonable. Now, if I said to myself, you know, I want to buy a $10 million house on the beach, that would have been stupid. But how, buying a house on the beach was attainable. Buying, you know, an island may not be attainable. So you still need to be realistic. It needs to be possible and it can't be impossible, but it doesn't have to be easy and you don't have to have tools, the resource to get it right now. Because if you shoot for the sky, you're going to hit the roof. And, you know, I'll give you an example. Last year, we're in South America for our yearly holiday with my wife, and I was listening to Grant Cardone 10 times. And it was an exciting thing. And you know, I said to Christina, I said, Christina, you know what? I want to make our business 10 times bigger, right? Which was growing 10 times is silly. And but one of the reasons 10 times is better because it's more exciting and you've got to think differently. You can't just work harder and get to 10 times. So if you want to grow 20%. 30%. All you got to do is work a little bit harder, you'll get there. But it's not what I wanted to do. I didn't want to work harder. I wanted to be inspired to work smarter because it's not about working harder. It's about working smarter with everything. Working harder can only get you so much. You really need to work smarter and start leveraging your time. So anyway, by doing that, I saw it was impossible to work harder and get our business 10 times, but I had that goal. So I had to reinvent and rethink things. And that's part of the reason I've done this 14 day challenge because what I want to do is I want to give so much value to people coming in on the front end of our program. I want to give you so much value that you realize that when you join, if you join Black Belt, the value you're going to get, you know, it's my ethical bribe of getting people on board. And that's what I've been doing. And I think that's the difference between our company and a lot of companies. We give as much value as I can because I really want to give you as much tools as you can to do it, you know, get what you want. But anyway, did we get 10 times? No, we didn't. But we grew three times in the first six months just by thinking differently, right? Now, there's no way we would have grown three times. And the goals, the year's not over yet either anyway. So we're still at time. So, um, you know, it's only the beginning of the year at the moment. I've got plenty of time now. So there you go. So having big goals is important. So, you know, over the next 12 months, how many houses would you like? Right? Because, you know, we're talking about property. 
Let's think about it. How many houses do you want? How are we going to work that out? Well, you might have to revisit this after you finish the course because then we're going to, we're going to talk about cash flow. We're going to talk about how to get a property with no cash deposit and talk about different ways of getting property and, and through, through JVs and different ways. So once you have a look at all different ways you can do it, it might open your mind to thinking. Because at the moment, you might think, shit, I have to save up for a deposit. I can get one house. But you might better get more if we can manufacture equity and do, do some other stuff. So there's lots of different ways of doing it. And if there's a will, there's a way. And being resourceful is the most important thing. But let's write down, you know, how many goals in the next, next 12 months? And I guess, why invest in real estate? And this is the thing. I mean, what is this going to get for you? Because what we want is we want more lifestyle. And to get more lifestyle, we really need more money, more freedom, which creates more meaning. And I think really being authentic and knowing why you're doing this is very, very important. In 10 years, what is, a, you know, let's talk about property and what a property is. So one property worth 500,000, because properties double every seven, 10, 12, 14 years, right? So let's say on average, every 10 years, they double. So if you bought one property for 500,000 today, in 10 years time, you'd make $500,000 equity, which is almost the same as cash. And also, you'd be getting $25,000 per year income passive without getting out of bed. And if you've got two properties, then you'd get $1 million and $50,000. And five properties, $2.5 million, $125,000. And 10 properties, $5 million, $250,000. So just to give you a bit of an indication of what a property is worth and how many you need to get where your goals are. So over the next 10 years, how many houses would you like? How many investment properties would you want? You know, when do you want to retire? What do you want to do for your retirement? How much income do you need? How many houses does that mean? We're going to go through this in more in depth in 10 years. So, okay. So the seven areas of life, you got your physical, which is like your health and fitness. You got your financial, your money, spirituality, you know, meditation, yoga, higher power, higher purpose, your social and relationships, which is, you know, your friends and your family and socializing, your career, your mental health, as in, you know, improving your mental things, reading, family, and relations. So that's seven areas of life. And that's what we're going to look. And for an example, you know, let's brainstorm. What I want you to do is brainstorm and just really start off going crazy and say, look, if money was an object, this is exactly my dream house. You know, this is my dream car house. This is my dream car. You know, you can't save yourself to wealth. You've got to invest yourself to wealth. So with your goals, I want you to really brainstorm and go full on, start with your long-term crazy big goals, and then let's pin them down and let's find out how, which ones are realistic, which ones we really want. And then what I want you to do for your homework is um, those seven areas, do those seven areas, but let's do the passion time ratio. Now, let's not worry about things like having a shower, going to the toilet or brushing your teeth. Let's worry about the big things like TV, gym, work. Let's find out where you're spending your time. Let's find out how long you're spending and what your value is as in fulfillment. And let's see if we can give you more fulfillment. I'm going to give you a little chart where you can put in the seven areas of life. And what I want you to do is, one, write down your long-term goal for that area in your life. Then your one-year goal, your one-month goal, your one-week goal. And then we're going to talk about habits. What's your daily habit or action that's going to get you there? See, and what now when I was talking about habits, I want to just get back to this really quickly. You know, habits, you need to do a habit 21 days roughly, and you need to focus on the cue. And I'm going to give you a few examples how you can get a good habit going. Let's say, for example, you wanted to give up smoking, right? Well, and let's say you smoke when you're around your friend Peter, when you're having a coffee, or when you're having a drink. So therefore, okay, they're the cues, Peter, coffee, drink. So what we do is let's try to move those cues and let's try to do something else in those cues and maybe have a celery stick or whatever we need to do. But also, what habits can we build to stop you from smoking? Well, one habit, good habit to stop you from smoking is going to the gym. Because if you're going to go to the gym, a lot of people that go to the gym don't smoke. Maybe because when they're working out, they're coughing half their lungs out and they probably don't like it. So and smoking is a notoriously difficult thing to give up. So what I would do is say, okay, I want to give up smoking. Let's, what habits can force me not to smoke? And let's say going to the gym is one of those habits. And now, how do you get yourself to go to the gym? Well, this is a really good way to do it. And this is the way I did when I first started is, you know, going to the gym is, can be difficult, 
But and, I, and I've got a gym at home. But what what you can do is you can buy some gym clothes, set up a time each week where you're going to go to the gym. And if, even if you don't feel like it and you don't feel like working out, you don't have to. But go to the gym and put in your workout clothes and just sit there on the floor for that half an hour. And look, this is the funny thing, and I've tried this before. If you're gonna, if you're in your workout gear and you're sitting for the floor for the half an hour, one hour that you, you've got for working out, you'll probably end up doing something and working out. You can't help yourself. And that's the little ways you can do to get your little habits going for each of your long-term goals. And what I want to do is build on those habits because those habits are compounding. And once you've got a habit in place, then that's on autopilot. We can get the next one in place. And what I like to do is stack habits, but I don't like to go, don't go overboard. Let's write a list of habits. Let's start with one easy one. Then once we've got one easy one, let's go a little bit harder and slowly get more and more because you've only got a certain amount of discipline. And I really want to, you know, these habits, if you put the, get the right habits, like my habits of reading, setting goals, my habits of working out and training, you know, have served me for my whole life. And, you know, this is very, very important. So I want you to take your time to do this. Have some fun with it. If you invest in your partner, you know, do it together. Have some fun. Please, once you've done it, write down some of your biggest goals in the group. Tell us that you've done your homework. Let us know what you're doing. What habit are you going to get? What habit are you going to break? Okay, great. So see you in the group. Thank you so much. Talk to you soon. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching. If you found this informative and helpful, please like, comment, share with someone that might find it helpful also. I encourage you to come and join our private Facebook group, Australian Property Chat. Join over 4,000 purposeful investors creating more income and impact. I'm there live every Thursday night. Looking forward to joining you live. See you there.